If you've been programming in C Sharp for a while, you've probably noticed that we can do typecasting to be able to go between types. But you've probably also noticed some situations where we can go between two different types without any casting at all. And it might seem a little bit magical to you. So how does that work? My name's Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to teach you how you can use something called implicit operators to be able to do type conversion without having to explicitly cast things between two different types. Just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses on Dome Train. And with that said, let's jump over to Visual Studio and check these out. Okay, so we're going to walk through an example, and I've written an entire blog post about it that you can check out here and I'll have a link to that in the description as well. And what we're going to be doing in this example is converting between two different types that aren't going to lose resolution. And I wanted to call this right out in the beginning because if you're interested in being able to leverage something like this, one of the big risks, and I think it's important to call it out in the beginning, is that sure, you can go add these implicit operators to convert between different things, but if you do that, you need to make sure that you're not losing information when you do that conversion. And what I mean by that is if you're automatically able to go from one type to another and not explicitly having to put in a cast, you might have it such that people using the code that you're writing are converting things accidentally, and they're not realizing that once they go automatically from one type to another, if they try to go back, they might go, oh crap, some of the information that I was storing in this object is now gone. And maybe it's not gone, but it's been rounded down and you can't get the information back. You start to lose the resolution of whatever you were trying to capture in the beginning. A really simple example of this would be having something like a double precision floating point number. So like, you know, 12.34. If you automatically could go to an integer with that, you'd be going to 12 basically right if we could automatically do that conversion if you tried to go back from 12 to get a double you would be at 12.0 and that's not 12.34 and that means that you've lost data so i just want you to keep that in mind as we go through these examples and i wanted to mention it at the start so you're aware of some of the risks with this in this example we're going to be going between megabytes and gigabytes and you could extend this pattern to kilobytes and other things as well but this is a pretty simple example to get the idea of how this works we're going to make a struct called megabytes and i made a struct because I want it to be a value type. It's very simple. And then we're only going to have this value property on here, but the magic is right here. And we have this method that has these keywords out the front. So it's public, static, and then an implicit operator as well. The name of the method in this case is really just the return type that we're able to do the conversion with. We're going to be able to go given megabytes and convert that to gigabytes. And that means that we take in a megabytes instance here, and that's because it's static. We're not operating on this current instance or anything like that. We need a megabytes instance passed in. And then what we're able to do is the conversion, right? So inside here, if we divide megabytes, the value that we have for megabytes by 1024, that would give us the value in gigabytes. So then we can return a whole new gigabytes here. And as you might expect, we're going to go look at the next class and it's going to be very similar, right? It's just going to work the opposite way. So we have a gigabytes class. It also has a value very much like we just saw on the megabytes struct that we created. And then here, the implicit operator is just reversed, right? So we are returning megabytes or passing in gigabytes. And then this logic works the opposite way. Instead of dividing by 1024, we're going to multiply by 1024. And recall that example I gave you at the beginning with the double and integer, right? Because I'm working with a double, we should not be losing precision because if this was an integer and if I go back up, we did this division right here, we'd be in for a world of pain because <laughs> doing this integer division would mean that we end up truncating that data and then we could not convert backwards to get the resolution back out. These two methods, right? This operator here and the inverse that we saw in the first struct, these are what's going to allow the magic to happen where we don't directly have to cast between these two things. There's no other relationship between these two types. So that means because there's no inheritance hierarchy or anything like that, we shouldn't really be able to convert between them except for the fact that we have these operators added. So let's go look at the example of how we can use this. Okay, so this example code that we have at the top here is going to make a megabytes up here. So we're having some type of storage that's going to be uh, 2048 megabytes and that's going to be hopefully two gigabytes in storage when we go to do this conversion but you'll notice line 11 
we're declaring gigabytes, right? So we have this variable called gigabytes. It's of type gigabytes, and I'm directly assigning storage, which is megabytes into here. If we go write that information out, we should be able to see that gigabytes is just going to output two. And that's because if we have 2048 and inside that conversion is doing a division by 1024, we should get two printed out when we look at the value for gigabytes. But we want to be able to go backwards, right? We want to make sure that we can do this conversion backwards and it's all going to work without losing resolution. So line 16 is also like line 11, where we're able to take gigabytes as the type and implicitly convert it to megabytes. You'll notice that I don't have any cast operators where we have the type in parentheses. We can just implicitly do that conversion thanks to the operator. And then from there, I'm just gonna write it to the console, the value of megabytes, and we should get back 2048, just like we started with. So let's go run this and see if this works. Okay, and here's the output. I figured you didn't doubt me, but when we look at the first line that's printed out here, this number two comes from line 13 here, where we're getting gigabytes, which is going to be just two because we started with 2048 megabytes. And given that, if we look at the last output in the console here, 2048, that comes from line 17 because we were able to convert back properly. And there you have it. It's very simple to be able to add implicit conversions just like we saw. But I wanna bring up the disclaimer that I added in the beginning of this video because I do think that if you use this properly, it can make some nice readable code, but I think that it's very easy to abuse things like this because it's not really a natural way that we're using types in C Sharp. So the biggest things that I'd recommend keeping in mind are number one, that you don't want to lose data resolution when you're doing this conversion. And number two, I want you to think about these conversions making sense. So just because you can convert something like megabytes back to maybe a double implicitly, once you do that, you are technically losing some data resolution because what's the unit of the double, right? It's maybe not a good conversion in general, maybe in situations it might be helpful for you. So just something to think about because once you introduce this, it means that anyone using your type can do these conversions implicitly, and it might be dangerous to them if they're not aware that that's happening and potentially losing some resolution. Now, C Sharp has plenty of things that we can use that are very powerful and often get misused. So if you're interested in seeing another thing like that, I recommend you check out this video next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.